see what happens. Um. Hmm. This takes a super long time. Oh my god, I just can't. Oh my god, I just can't. Oh my god, I just can't. I just can't. I super, super just can't. So angry. I am enraged. I am so enraged. So enraged. Come on, open the door. Open the door. I am raging. This is me enraged. Oh, look, it's not done. Screw it. I don't care about the pressure. Just open the goddamn door. Jetpack on. No, 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 no. You're not getting away. Get over here. Fine. Just sit right in front of it. Yeah, just right there. Just sit right there. It'll all be over soon. There you go. Aren't we full of happiness now? Aren't we just full of happiness and sunshine? Here, let's help you out a little. Hmm? That'd be a little helpful? Oh, look at that! Oh, the poor little gene splicer! That's what I think about the gene splicer. This. This. This is what I think about the gene splicer. Okay? Friggin' worthless! So yeah, that. A lot of this plant update is just a lot of randomness. And... One thing that I really hate in games and just about anything is randomness. I'm not saying all randomness. There's there's pseudo-randomness. There's things that seem random that aren't random. Like uh, if I have this... Uh, this uh, coal generator, this solids generator over here pumping away and it's, it's spitting out a, a, a sum of gas and amount of heat and it goes through... Uh, all of these um, little set pieces here. I don't need these anymore. The output that you're going to get is going to be hard to calculate. It's not going to be... Um, uh, there's a lot of variables. And even if you count for all the variables, you're not going to be 100% on your calculation. That's, that's sort of non-random randomness. That it's a it's a it's a system, it's a complicated system, and the complexity has emergent properties that appear random to the observer. This plant stuff isn't that. This plant stuff is just random. It it is actual physical randomness, which I find uh, terribly annoying. So I created this debacle. Um, which is a ton of uh, hydroponics trays and one hydroponic device. So I think it's this one right here. No, that's a tray. There it is. So this hydroponic device it actually controls something. Um, and I haven't put in the, the, the controller yet. So let's do that now. Here we go.
just put the controller in. I had to change the coat a little from the last time. All of these lights I've just decided to uh, control through the battery. So I'll just turn the battery on and off. We'll turn the light on and off. Just um, easy to do. So what I'm uh, what I found out is that um, uh, these hydroponic trays ca cause a lot of lag now. It's using a whole bunch more CPU power than it used to. Um, frame rates are down a little bit, and um, yeah, I think that there's a lot of code underneath every single planet. Um, it is controlling, what, uh, 10 or 12 different uh, attributes, and uh, I guess they pull them even if the tray is empty. So, let's get started planting all of these. And this is just to prove to myself that um, there is no rhyme or reason for anything that it does. Anything that the the results of uh, growth um, are just random. That the plants that you come up come out with don't really have a lot to do with the parent planet or plant or the environment that it's grown in. Um, and that's for uh, stabilized um, plants and seeds. Um, destabilized, I'm not sure what will happen to it. I haven't even tested it yet, but stabilized, uh, it doesn't seem to do... Hmm. It just... Uh, maybe 15 degrees is a little too... Uh, that's another thing. Um, all of this randomness can ruin your game before you begin. You could plant... Uh, a plant that does not have uh, that uh, um, has attributes that just that you can't meet. Uh, why can't you do it here? Okay, so the okay, there we go. But. Hmm, the plant analyzer can't analyze the thing in the first slot. That is interesting. It can't analyze the thing in the, um, the uh, hydroponic device. Well, let's just keep going here. I'll just plant all this crap. We got them all planted. Now, which one's the tray again? Which one's the device? There we go, the hydroponic device. And yeah, it doesn't show up. So if I look at another plant, it'll say 09. And then when I look at the, the plant in the device, it also says 09. But then I look at another one, 117. Then back at the device, 117. So um, this plant analyzer does not work on the device for some reason. So I will have to go a roundabout way to look at it by creating a table because nothing can be easy in this game. Will that be in the way? I don't think that'll be in the way. Ooh. Let's put it right there. Yeah. I thought that was supposed to be orange, or did I make it orange? I don't remember what I did. Doesn't matter. So it is the... Is it an analyzer? Is that what it's called? Yes, that is what it's called. No, that's not... Get back on the table. There you go. Now I need a sampler. And another battery. And now, is this one? No, it's this one. Yeah. 
now I can sample that stupid thing and find out what its uh, attributes are. Okay, so it's pretty much right down the center. Um, for attributes. And planting them was only part one. Let's pause the game for a split sec here. Because now we have to go on to the next part, which is looking at every single one of these. So, and I'm just going to stop on the first row for now because I don't want to go through them all right now. I'll have to, because eventually I'm going to have to harvest each one of these things and figure out what the, what's happening. So the one that we have right here in the hydroponics uh, device doesn't seem to be doing too well. And I'm not sure why. It's a uh, dark o'clock right now. not really telling me much, is it? Whoops, I didn't want to jump. Yeah, everything should be fine. The minimum temperature, however, is of course five degrees below um, what it's comfortable. It, should, it wants 20 degrees and I put it down to 15 degrees because I want to see uh, what it'll do to these plants. Um, we have a, uh, a very pronounced downward pressure for temperature. So uh, the only plants that should survive are the ones that are um, going to climatize to the cold weather. And we'll see how many of the offspring actually have um, lower minimum temperature requirements. Now, my guess is that it's not going to change too much and that we're going to see random results on either side of the, um, of the, thresh of the minimum thresholds that we already have because I think that the results are completely random uh, for, these, for these plants, that they just, they just spit out randomness, which is sort of accurate in that organisms in the wild uh, their offspring will be um, a little bit random. They'd be more closer to their to their parents' ability. So if a if a if a parent of an organism has long hair, let's say, um, its children, some of them will have slightly shorter hair and slightly longer hair um, within a certain variation, and. Um, Let's say they're in a colder climate, the longer haired ones will uh, will live longer. So over the, or well, will have a better life. We'll be, we'll be able to reach sexual maturity faster. So um, the short haired ones will die off quicker. Now, if that's the same thing as as in this game, eh, it's a game. Why are you being so hard ass about it? Um, it would be nice if you had the um, the the fruiting plants be you know, more climatized than the, than the adults that you would see the pressure. But I mean, that's not something, you know, hugely to complain about. Um, what would be to complain about is the second generation. If the second generation, you see even larger spikes upward when you're trying to do a downward pressure. So uh, want um, a higher minimum, that's kind of counterproductive. But Again, it's 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 very random. All of these um, seeds that start off with, it seems like they're within one degree of um, of your requirements. But that first plant that I planted is doing the worst, whereas others seem to be doing much better, even though they are they're no different from one another. They're mostly the same. Why the first plant isn't uh, doing as well? I don't know, but let's just let it grow.
Okay, so we already have one that's seeded here, and it's the second plant that we planted. So the first one um, definitely had some kind of uh, um, randomness to it that prevented it from growing as quickly as the rest of them from the one behind it. Even though it has a, a, a slight growth speed multiplier, yeah, it could just be some kind of uh, random uh, modifier on it that uh, that's invisible to us as a player. Oh, oh, wait a minute. No, that's not what we're going to do. First, we're going to look to see at what the base plant's stats are. So minimum is 19, maximum is 31, so it's a little wider than normal. Um, and then when we pick the plant, its seed is 19 and 32. So it's a little bit different, but I may have been incorrect about how variable it could be. 1930. 1731. This one seeded yet? Yep, that one seeded. So we'll look at the plant first. Plant is 1931 again. And its seed is 2030. So there's just, there's very little change in these ones. The last experiment in the hydro, um, in the, oh, this is 1631, in the hydro station, the hydroponic station, they seem to um, mutate a little more quickly. 1831. This one is 20 and 31. Oh, this one doesn't have seeds yet. So this one does have seeds here. And... Hmm, doesn't like the fact that there's a lot of darkness. 1831, so a little bit of a downward pressure there. Twenty one thirty two, twenty one thirty, nineteen thirty, twenty thirty one. So even though we're we're in a colder environment. I think I may have... Oh, I did. I grabbed the right one. 2032. 2133. So, this seems to be more consistent than it was the, the, the last time, but I had already bred them through once with the uh, hydroponics. Uh, station. 2031. And it seems like they're, they're growing okay in the, uh, in the colder environment. If we look at the, at the tolerances here, um, it'll continue growing to minus, or to zero degrees. It'll have some kind of growth down to zero degrees, and it'll have some kind of growth all the way up to 50 degrees, which is kind of absurd. Is this one seated yet? That one's seated. And that one is 2030. 2130. So... Twenty thirty. It's also possible that the uh, add-on, I was doing something to it, to the plants, because um, it hadn't been updated at that point. I'm not sure if it's been updated yet, but uh, it wasn't. Uh, the last update 
to the uh, add-on framework was before this uh, um, update came out. Well, that one's got, got a little bit of a downward trend. So there's not a lot of variation this time around. Which is probably way more realistic. Now we did, we did have an 18 degree guy here, this one right here. So I wanted to try something with the splicer because uh, I blew up the splicer in the in the last lab because it just irritated me for how long it took but I realized that it may you may be able to put more than one in there Light so on. there we go I will grab the 18 and stick it in there no nope. all kinds of errors Some of those are, are, are um, less than I want to, uh, to lose. Oh well, it doesn't matter. Let's try putting them in like this. And no, only one at a time. Great. And just to show one more time how slow it is, if I choose uh, darkness, light, Low temperature resistance. Boop. This is how slow it is. It is agonizingly slow. And I can only do it to one plant at a time. And can I shut it off? Uh, let's just make sure that it hasn't... No, you can't glitch it. So this is with the, the actual potatoes. Let's see what happens if we try to do it with seeds. Is it any faster with seeds? Oh, big errors. Let's grab a bunch of seeds. And we'll let me put one one. Oh, just one. And more errors. And this is a clean install. Fresh clean install. Fresh clean um, uh, game or uh, uh, save. Does this go faster? Not really. So this is completely useless. This uh, this this set piece is completely useless. Um, no one is going to use it. If it takes that long to do anything, it takes as long to uh, splice um, a gene as it does to. Hmm. To splice a gene as it does to grow a, a whole plant, and you can only do one plant at a time, uh, no one's going to use this thing. Because that's it's not fun. It's just... It just isn't. So we'll put this over here because we'll blow that one up again. It's, um, it's, it's crap, and no one should use it, and the uh, developers should be ashamed that they ever put something that wasted so many people's time uh, in a game. So this one's 2030 as well. And the plant is 1930. So there's a little bit of a downward pressure on that one. But that's the wrong thing to throw. 2130. I could go down this these all of these plants just to uh, to find what the randomization is, but it seems uh, pretty clear that it is just totally random. There is no um, there is no accounting for the for the outside um, 
outside variables. It's just it's just going to split out randomness. And to select them uh, passively or naturally in game environment without using like a that uh, destabilizer set piece. Oh, here's a 16. We'll keep you. That was the first 16 we got. One. Didn't want that. Yeah. Now, I'm not. There's. I'm not sure there is any automated analysis uh, as of yet. Uh, there may never be one. So, like being able to read. When a Harvey picks a a, a, a particular um, plant up to find out, oh, there's a seventeen. To find out if it's uh, if the offspring of that plant is uh, more uh, more able to survive uh, darkness or light or or poor conditions or things like that, because right now that's not implemented. I don't think. I know how uh, supremely incorrect I was about labeling, so I could be wrong about this too. And as you saw with the first uh, with the first plant that we planted, this one here, which is it ready now? Oh, it is ready now. But even though the base seeds are pretty identical, you can get uh, wildly different uh, growth. Uh, factors out of something, depending on, on, I don't know, depending on something that's in the code that we can't see. And it's not the device, because I, I tested the device to make sure the code was working in here, and it grew um, normally. So it just has something to do with that particular plant, and it spit out a plant that wants higher, um, higher, uh, temperature, higher minimum temperatures. Now, is that true for all of them? Nope. That one's a little lower. Nope, that's the same, so... Hmm. Yeah, so any would-be geneticist that wants to, or, or would-be farmer, that wants to uh, separate out, uh, that wants to um, create plants that, you know, may grow outside on Mars, because Mars is particularly cold, with uh, very low pressure, it might be very difficult. Um, you would have to have a lot of plants, probably not this many plants, and you would have to go through each individual one per cycle, and it takes about an an hour to grow them to full um, uh, to full maturity. So you're looking at like hours and hours of gameplay just to uh, just to select the proper plants to come down to a uh, the uh, pressure and temperature levels of Mars. And I think that's putting too much investment into a game. I don't think uh, like that's too much waiting. I, I don't even like mining in this game. So, like, well, this is a 17. It's nice. Although that being said, um, as I'm picking through these, I could be planting the uh, the new the new... Ooh, a 14. Well, let's, let's plant that 14 right now. I could be doing that. I could be planting. Um, uh, I could be planting the plants that I that I want to to breed over again, and that could be, you know, uh, more useful than complaining about it. But I like complaining. Uh, oh, I I put it I put it in my inventory. Oh, hello. Yeah, the game does not like this many... Uh... Oh, there's another one. Come on, let's get more airs. Come on. 
Come on, let's get to an air symphony. There you go. Doofus. Okay, let's uh, let's just pick up everybody who's left. And it's not hard to get this number of, of seeds. Like, you can triple your yield um, every hour, which, you know, they're all about the same. I don't know why I'm checking that anymore. Ooh, here we got a 14. I haven't seen a 25 though, because that would be uh, that would be the other side of the coin. Eh? That would be uh, the plant. There's another 15. That would be a that would be a plant uh, randomly climatizing to something hotter, even though it's not in a hot environment. Uh, why did I throw the the thing? So this is what you would have to do if you wanted to do it naturally. And even if you wanted to use um, uh, the set pieces, you still have to do some kind of variation on this because this, the, that splicer is just maddeningly stupid. I wonder if I can launch it, if it's light enough that I could put it underneath a bunch of, uh, or over top of a bunch of... Uh, active vents, or just vents, and kind of spit it up into the air, or could I burn it like a blowtorch, or I just want to do something mean to it for wasting my time. Eh, 17's not low enough for me. 18. 19. I will be going through most of this footage later on to make like a, a spreadsheet or something. And I'm and I'm just looking at temperature at this point. So the other factors won't even be look won't I won't even look at those. And I might look at the save file uh, because these these individual uh, modifiers will be in the save file somewhere and I can collect them from there. In fact, they might already exist. If I had a Harvey uh, pulling all of these up, pulling all these out, sorry, um, uh, it's possible that I could uh, uh, I could find a specific individual. So very little, very little variation here. Got a little bit lucky. Seventeen. Nah, that's not close enough for me. I will go down to the end of this row because I know I would be curious. There's another uh, another error there, and I'm I'm neglecting my snack. And I can I can hear my convection oven beeping at me. A little mini convection oven. That looks like a uh, ooh fifteen. That looks like a, an easy bake oven rather than like a real oven. Which I think is kind of adorable and uh, useful. Fifteen. 
mean? Now, if you're ooh, another fourteen. More errors. My concern is is that when these index errors come up, it's possible that I could be losing the traits that I've that I've been seek that I've been seeking. Because the game is not exactly stable. And yes, it, I know it's a uh, that's an early access title, but I mean if you keep adding features and never um, never stabilize the features you already have, then it's never going to be stable. Like just look at uh, Arc. Arc is still very unstable and very janky. Okay, so this this area, let's see if it's correct. Yeah, it's a 14. It still has pretty high max tolerance, so it's uh, it's just given a just given it a wider growing range, which is pretty good. Let's see if there's. Let's just give ourselves a nice graphic to look at. And that's one row. It took that long to do one row. And we found one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight plants out of 31 that we were um, sort of trying to find. And lots of decreased usage, water usage. All of this stuff is pretty random. This light stuff will change too because the um, the lighting requirements for the plants are not the same as the uh, um, how much light and darkness you get from the star. But yeah, I guess with if these things if these ones grow up, um, how variable are they going to be? I don't know. Um, Will we still be able to um, select against like lower temperature ratings? Well, it's going to be less and less and less each time, obviously. Um, and the last experiment, the lab that I blew up, I have to throw all of those results away, which I have, because the um, add-on um, is quite obviously screw skewing the results. There was much more variability way more errors uh, for the plant and I I don't blame the add-on for it it was it was a uh, it it was not written um, for the plant uh, the farming update it was finished before the farming update came out and I'm sure that the writer is updating it as we speak um, and uh, the mod that I was using with that add-on framework uh, wouldn't have affected any of this stuff because um, it uh, it it never it never addressed any of these the the plants or the the hydroponic stations or any of that stuff so that wouldn't that wouldn't have any effect on it but the add-on absolutely would because it would be parsing all the data it would it would be trying to get into every part of that of of the the way that it, it would work and it inserting itself in such a way that you could modify the functionality. So if there was changes in how the APIs or the names of the APIs and uh, how they're called to each other and things like that, it, it could have um, unexpected results. It seemed stable, but it also seemed like there was a lot more randomness in this plant stuff. So I don't know. What I do know is that uh, it looks like there's a very low ratio um, to uh, to what you want, to what you're selecting. And uh, if you have the patience to do this, then I guess you have the patience to do this. I'm only getting the patience here because, well, I'm collecting data. And 
there's no easy way to to get this data out of there. Um, I might play with like slot loaders and things like that to see if there's any way to automate this because like what would improve life uh, uh, greatly is if Harvey could pick all of these things for me and then I can just put like um, like a sorter or something in the mix and the sorter will check I can program the sorter to look for one thing does it have lower um, um, cold resistance? That it, it, will it will it will it grow in a colder environment? And if it grows in the in a co colder environment, uh, kick the plant or the seed to the left instead of the right. And uh, that way, I wouldn't have to go through each individual object, looking at each individual one. I'm I'm certain. The developer uh, never intended someone to play the game like this, to like be so selective. I think they were probably more uh, likely to. Um, I think they're more likely to think that uh, players will allow for a lot of loss, because this would be much easier if I just hooked up a Harvey and told Harvey to harvest uh, everything when it reached an average. So if the if the average um, harvest readiness was like above 50%, it would it would grab it would harvest all of the all of the plants currently uh, there's another set of bears uh, currently in the trays. And then if you had a 50% loss in that, then the next generation would be uh, more hardy. Uh, but I wouldn't want to do that because you're also trying to to feed yourself and it seems like food is also intended to be um, a tradable because it seems like the, the, the trading of food uh, you get you get a pretty good bonus on that uh, and I'm just uh, I'm just going by other people's videos well mostly um, uh, Cows Are Evil's video, and I think there was one other person that I watched videos that he was doing trades, and I, was, I looked at the trade numbers, because I don't, I don't typically watch very many stationary videos, which is why I'm making stationary videos. I, 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 would, I have occasionally thought I'm going to make a RimWorld vi video, but I also watch uh, Francis John's videos, and there is no way that I would get anywhere near Francis John's ability in that game. But I don't know that I'm bad at stationers. And if I don't know I'm bad, I think that what I'm doing is good. Yeah, there is so few. Like, if, if I put the temperature down to like 10 degrees Celsius, and I just harvested stuff that was uh, uh, that grew quickly. I'm also starting to think that maybe um, there is a random dice roll. As soon as you grow the plant, as soon as you plant the plant, and it's already figured out what its uh, what its offspring are going to be, and it will also grow according to what its offspring are. I think that's it. My inventory is full and I don't want to do this anymore. So, yeah. There's the example. Uh, I might come back in here and uh, do some Harvey experiments, but at this point... Nah, I don't really want to. Um, uh, no, I'm not going to blow that up either. I've already blown it up. So, that's it. Um, you, you get you get a very low yield ratio here. It'll take forever. I guess if you destabilize it, it'll 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 go. It'll um, they'll they'll change their temperature and uh, they they'll change their attributes faster. But ah, that thing's slow too. So who the hell cares? 
maybe it's offspring. Maybe that'll be the next thing that I look at is destabilization to see if the offspring retain destabilization and um, what's the yield ratio. I might even finish picking all of these and um, write down the results or something, and they'll be available on a link to a, a paste bin or something. I don't know. This was incredibly boring. I... Please, Rocket Works, put fun things in the game, please. Please, we're just little kids. We just want to play. Stop being so boring. Not quite done yet. I took a look at the uh, save file again, and um, it's different from the, the, the last time. A little different from the last time. Um, now there are references uh, to the specific plants in here. And it um, saves quite a bit of data here. Um, like it, it saves what what it was, what the quality, uh, how many seeds and potatoes uh, that it's that is produced. Um, I guess fifth stage means seeds as well. I'm not sure. I wish I could I could read that um, in game, but I don't think you can. Um, here's its gene wrapper, and there is only one gene wrapper. Um, whereas last time we were looking, there was um, quite a few uh, quite a few gene wrappers in uh, in in succession. Now that could be interference from the um, from the add-on. Let's get back to the bottom here. This is still the same plant. That's that doesn't make sense to me. Why would there? Why would you need two references? And this also tells it. Uh, this is saving like um, how long it was lit, how long it was in darkness. If I was suffocating it and stuff like that, it saves that. Um, it might this. Gene data here might be ancestral names, so it's possible that every time you have um, a successive child being produced off of uh, a successive offspring being produced from a plant, it will save the last plant's genes, and then will give um, and then this this amalgam or not that amalgam. This amalgam, this this uh, aggregated state, is the total lifespan that all the previous plants have gotten, um, have been affected by these things. How that factors into how the whole the, how the whole plant responds, I don't know, but I kind of now want to go back to a version of the original lab and really shrink things down and start with with just one seed and perpetuate that seed like um, 30 generations and see how much data is accumulated in, in 30 generations of, of growth. Um, is this, but I can, I can see why, I can also see why there is a lot of errors when you're, um, when you're growing a lot of plants together because this is a lot of data to parse, and there um, there is most definitely limits to how much uh, the program, the Stationer's game, will digest at a time. So you're probably um, going to get a lot of resets as I'm as I'm uh, harvesting plants. If I'm harvesting like 500 plants, I might l lose data on those plants over and over again. This happens when you're changing um, atmospheric uh, networks a lot, when you're, when you're moving a lot, of, uh, a lot of pipe and then putting them back in. You will lose um, the data stored in that network and it'll reset and you'll go to zero PSI or zero kilopascals. So this is, this is, this is a, a big um, concern when it comes to these plants. Now it's possible that each plant represents a new network. I don't know. I'm going to experiment with that. It's still boring, though.